So I thought the best way to make some jungle specific terrain that is realistic to jungles is to look at some pictures of the jungle. I came across this picture here. Apparently there are 12 soldiers hidden away. Why don't you press pause and see if you can spot them. And while you're scanning, you're actually looking at all the different natural colours, but the textures as well. And a good way to study these textures is some, from some of these black and white photographs. Look at the textures of the ground around these guys fighting in Burma, that bloke there pointing to the local bar. So the colours, you can see where the light shines through and where there's a lot of shade. Look at the ground, all that rotten vegetation. That's decades of rotten vegetation just built up on top of itself with the odd sapling poking through. Now this is primary jungle that occurs on land that has never been cultivated. The plants that survive grow to be high trees and then they deny nutrients and through this canopy light to the ground making it quite barren and therefore quite easy to move through. It's often on a gradient though. Opposite to that then is secondary jungle. Now this was land that was once cultivated is now abandoned. There are no tall trees and every single step appears to be a trip hazard. L very difficult to move through, quite exhausting and quite noisy as well. I don't like secondary jungle. There is a third type of terrain that you get in the highlands and because it's cooler, a lot windier and uh, there's less water, the big trees don't really get a chance to grow. So I'm going to try and make a flock that replicates uh, what we've just seen and do it on the cheap of course and what you're looking at here is tea from tea bags and uh, I had to dry this out because I'm not using a fresh tea bag because I'm a bit tight like that. Now I suggest you use tea bags because the lower quality tea is used so you've got these like I don't know if you can see them in the, the pick here these like little sticks loose tea is of a higher quality and I found this out whilst traveling to Sri Lanka and a couple of tea factories there that's about two or three tea bags worth there and here is another few now I put bits of rice in there to act as a desiccant so that they don't uh doesn't get damp the rice should hopefully like absorb any water now, I found this other packet of parsley that was dated 2010. And so it's like, well, it's nearly you know, seven years old now. Can't put a bit too much in there. We'll soon find out. I drink a lot of tea, so I can always add to it. Give it a good mix up. Try and ignore the little huge white maggots. And I kind of hope, well, actually, that's not a bad ratio there. Now, the last thing that I want to put in there is some of the larger sort of bits of branches. And this is uh, cinnamon. Again, went from when I was in Sri Lanka all those years ago. That should darken it down a bit um, and put some like great big lumps of like, wood D looking. Do you know what? Let's leave it at that. I can always add more if I want to. Uh, cinnamon is, is actually become this tree bark so yeah do you know what that's not a bad lot sort of um ratio of colors there these big bits i can just exclude or use them as sort of focal points on the uh terrain i suppose i better make some bases now eh? so i've brought it into a spare takeaway container uh, just so I can put the lid on it and keep the cats from using it as a litter tray. If you see any cat hairs in here they're there by accident. The uh, container itself is big enough to do a dreadnought base. You can just dip it in, whizzle it around and uh, get everything covered. At the moment I've got this Hell Blaster chap partially made. I thought I'd give him a go and just covered him in the PVA glue and I'll just bear it. Actually that I'll just leave them like that. No, why? That would be ridiculous. Let's get him out. The PVO glue was quite wet. I watered it down a bit because the flock that I've made is they're all natural. Let's get his head off. It's all a natural substance, and um, as such, quite porous. Uh, what I found then is a piece of rice that's there to act as a moisture trapped or desiccant has gone on there and so I don't know how that so what I might end up doing is just 
doing a few like that see how they go I might put some sort of lacquer on top there just to hold everything down but at the moment I think that for considering how quick it was is okay all right just a different sort of idea here is trying to this out as if this guy's on a track a well-trodden track either by like animals or previous human traffic or whatever aliens and that there's no undergrowth actually on that track itself Let's see how that works maybe not maybe yes convincing enough for me nice little lump of cork or something there that I'll have to tack down here we go here goes this is a 40 mil base so what I'm going to try and do is whilst avoiding those chunks of rice is on this larger base once I get this first layer down is uh, put some smaller bits of that um, cinnamon that looks like tree bark I'm going to try and remove these great big lumps of rice because that would look like his attack of the killer maggots monster killer maggots So there is a that chap, I don't suppose, yeah, you know, that just does remind me of the sort of jungles that I was in. Sort of quite spongy under feet, wet, damp, so maybe a gloss varnish. So that chap will be a lieutenant and like all good officers is directing his men to the local bar. And no. Even though they're circled red, I still can't see them. 